Hi guys, Asmo here. Today I have an update for the character I'm going to be working throughout this league. This is a very high-end uh, build in terms of the cost. This is definitely not a budget cost, considering that the main piece of this build is the Eternity Shroud, which right now is the single most expensive unique except for I think at series reflection the fated version of like the at series mirror other than that this is like the most expensive unique item right now uh, that it when when it's not six linked and also when it's six linked it costs like anywhere around 10 exalts pretty much right now raw no matter like with the lowest possible rolls and so on uh, so you have to like get, spend at least 10 exalts for this single item and then other pieces can be really really expensive as well However, this is an amazing build that I wanted to make for a really long time and I decided that this league is uh, pretty good uh, Because we can craft items I can craft really good shaper uh, Items that will have some extra shaped stats and then the life and resist will be so easy to put on with the seeds so let me quickly uh, give you like an overview of what the build is uh, you also see some gameplay footage throughout this video whenever I talk about stuff while not showing anything specific so you'll get a feel of like what the build is like in terms of the gameplay but in terms of the how it works we're using EK so ethereal knives uh, we've got 21 23 here EK that we are then Converting to lightning. So we're converting it through three different sources. Number one is physical to lightning gem uh, So that does half of the conversion then we're using gloves that do up to 25% Physical damage converted to lightning damage and then we're also using watchers eye that converts physical damage to lightning when affected by wrath and I do have wrath here that I'm running together with also uh, hatred so that that way 100% of our physical damage is converted to lightning now we deal zero physical damage as you can see ek no physical damage at all so what happens later after that we're converting it to cold you need two call of the brotherhood a decent call of the brotherhood will cost you like 30 chaos something like that and you can buy one for like five chaos and then divine it up you can buy one that is more expensive, but eventually I actually want shaped ones. So again, I'm going to need like at least 10 C for each one of them. Uh, sorry, 10 exalted orbs for each one of them, not 10 C. Like, so that's going to be 20 exalts that I need to get to upgrade the rings. Uh, and then also you quality them to 20% with elemental damage, which increases the conversion from 40% to 48 percent and that way you are converting actually 96 percent of your lightning to cold so again only very small part of lightning but your spells will shock 100 percent of frozen enemies and we also go crit so we do freeze we do shock and we do ignite as well because after all of that we're also converting 50 percent of that cold damage which cold damage is 96 percent of our damage uh, into uh, fire damage right so we're converting so we're doing like mostly half cold half fire and then on top of all of that for each elemental source of damage the eternity shroud converts five percent of that into chaos damage and, and adds it on top right so uh, let's count the shaper items we have one two three four five six seven eight right so we have eight items here that means 8 times 5, that's 40. That means we're gaining 40% of the lightning damage as chaos, 40% of the cold damage as chaos, and 40% of the fire damage as chaos. So roughly we're gaining, uh, what is it, 40 plus 40 plus 20, right? So we're gaining basically 100% of our damage uh, matched as chaos. So we're doing like half elemental, half chaos. And then you can even convert more. That will give us another what? Uh, these two rings, if they were shaper items, would give us another 5%, 5%. So that's 10, 25, right? 25% damage. So we would have like 125% damage as chaos extra so most damage would be chaos damage right on top of other thing other sources of the same thing as well that we have on the weapons that i'll speak about in a moment so 
because of that we're going to be dealing mostly chaos damage and when we get the rings we're also going to get uh, hits ignore enemy monster chaos resistance uh, that, uh, so that is something you get when all of your items are shaped shaped items that's why we want these uniques shaped later on so that's the that's how we are scaling our damage on top of also of course going crit right so we're going crit we're getting a bunch of crit multi we're getting a bunch of uh crit uh, multi jewels so you want jewels that have increased global fizz damage increased uh, increased global crit strike chance increased crit strike uh, multiplier uh, that global and for spells so you can get a ton of damage i still have old jewels in some places that affect me when i hold a shield but i swapped away from a shield you can use a shaped shield um that would be also something uh, really good like if you want to be more tanky you can also shield charge and uh, with a shield this is definitely a viable way of playing you can even like fit another herald or something because uh you'll be able to have lower mana reservation with the shaped shield mod like 25 percent reduced mana reservation or something like that um but also on top of that like the on top of the eternity shroud giving us that fuck ton of damage through converting our damage so many times we're also gaining that damage from harnessed void so again non chaos damage is being converted and added as extra chaos damage but that also counts the physical one so that is even more damage like the more you convert the better this node becomes and basically it's five percent chance to gain 100% uh, of non chaos damage with hits as extra chaos damage what that means is you have a 5% chance to basically deal what 100, 200, 350% extra damage as scales. It's absolutely crazy, right? So, uh, and then 25 and 15% to get uh, to do a little bit less. So this is absolutely crazy amounts of damage. I'm still not 100% sure about all of these nodes. I'll probably be going for like a ES helmet and picking escape artist. But right now I have patient reaper for sustain and mana sustain. Uh, because it's pretty important uh, otherwise i still haven't figured out a good great way to like sustain uh, and have like good recovery but patient reaper solves that problem for us um so the thing that uh let me go over the the gear i guess right so uh for gear we're using of course eternity shroud uh, to call of the brotherhood which i already explained and the the rest uh you can find some shaped uniques for these slots as well but the basic uh idea is to use uh, just sharp shaped rare items um, for a helmet you can get adds uh lightning damage to spells which is the best mod lightning is the best element because we if we get lightning then we benefit from the eternity sh the shroud for the further conversions right because the conversions go in order of physical lightning cold fire chaos right so if we get co extra cold damage we only benefit from uh, eternity shroud and and what is it called and harness the void giving us damage for the cold and 50 percent fire but if we get lightning then we benefit from lightning cold and the fire right so that's why lightning added lightning damage is the best damage out of all of them that's why also on this weapon i have gained 15 percent of physical damage as extra lightning damage which is better than uh uh 15 percent uh, of physical damage as extra chaos damage for example right because if we gain the 15 percent as extra chaos that's just 15 percent extra but if we gain it as extra lightning then that is uh also the lightning is uh, converted to cold and then converted to fire which increases our damage even more right so yes for the weapons i chose daggers because i want to do whirling blades uh and also it gives me the more consistent crit right 50 percent crit chance you can get higher attack speed if you want on the daggers as well um, there is also a way of um, uh, using scepters but with scepters i'm not sure how you would exactly like i guess one scepter and shield would be probably also very very strong uh, but i definitely do like the two daggers and then on the daggers you want to have um, the most important mod is gain uh, like eight percent of elemental damage as extra chaos damage right this basically gives you like even more of this stuff uh, and then increased spell damage gain percentage of non-chaos damage as extra chaos again that benefits from the conversions um, another thing you want is crit spell damage uh, crit multi uh, added lightning damage stuff like that and then also i would put arcane surge you want arcane surge somewhere 
preferably uh, on kill setup you don't have to use it in your main links i'm using it in my main links right now uh, but you can use arcane surge in uh, like on the weapon or have it from some other sources uh, i'm definitely gonna look into that as well um, here we have some extra attack speed attack speed is actually pretty good as well if you can have attack speed on your gloves that's also really good for gloves you want to have fingerless silk gloves that are shaped that are at least level 85 uh, which is gonna cost you a bunch like it might cost you like 100 chaos just for the base uh, it's a very very rare base because it needs to be like this specific and very high level and shaped um, and that will allow you to roll the increased uh, projectile damage right so socketed gems are supported by slower projectiles and increased projectile damage that will boost your projectile damage of ek however i got like the lowest roll possible because it's tier three and there's also tier one and, and tier two and tier one which are higher damage it goes up to like 30 increased projectile damage which is what my ideal gloves would have then there is also blind which you can have um then you want to do physical damage converted to lightning damage as a prefix and then you want to also augment with life from the harvest crafting to have extra life on it and then have the resistances i have two pretty good resistances on that so these gloves are actually pretty amazing right now they would sell for a lot of money but i i think it's actually very easy to make even better gloves than that um for belt it's just a shitty belt just a basic belt i made uh, i just found a shaped uh, rustic sash and rustic sash increases your global physical damage so that's cool and i just put life and resist on it and then i put crafted under resist fire and chaos right uh, for boots i just bought boots that had a 35 percent movement speed and some life and res on it and then i put crafted another res on that um, for the amulet same thing just a couple res and life and then crafted more res on that and for helmet i just uh, again life res and the added lightning damage to spells and i crafted res on top of that so that's it very straightforward gear for the flasks at serious promise is absolutely insane so with flasks with charge just keep in mind we we have a lot of ramp up for maps that is very very quick though like you kill one pack and you're pretty much fully ramped up like maybe after two packs you're fully ramped up because you're gonna gain like four frenzy charges four power charges uh and there there are a lot of things uh, that, that benefit you as you're mapping uh, and then of course the flasks the total damage i checked on uh, pob is like 1.8 million dps uh, total right now but that means it's gonna scale really really high because i'm still like this is not min max at all this can be so much stronger like i still have like level 19 random gems that i'm not sure if they, they are the exact uh, gems that i want to be running I'm, I'm sure about the call to fire fist to lightning and ethereal knives and probably spell echo as well for the dps but um they still can be improved so many things can be improved and uh, and also you can get like plus one to uh, all spell and physical spell you could even have that twice you could potentially have like plus four plus five from the amulet so we could have like plus five to the levels of ek uh, and you can have plus four from the chest because you can have like corrupted duration and projectile i think so you can have what four five six seven eight nine you can have plus nine levels you can have level 30 ek actually <laughs> you can realistically actually you could have that but that would require buying a really expensive eternity shroud um so this can be really min max to a an insane amount of damage uh but at serious promise if you look at the tooltip which says uh, 391 just with the flask that's like 60k uh dps that it shows here which of course is getting scaled way more by all of the frenzy charges power charges and so on uh, we're also using taste of hate so here you want to have a maximum roll for fizz and maximum roll for elemental damage because you scale both of them so it's insane and then because we deal more than half of our damage through chaos damage then the chaos leech is also amazing right because we get so much extra chaos damage so this is just a crazy amount of uh chaos damage and then we get also extra physical damage as cold from this we get uh, some crit and onslaught as well right i would definitely recommend uh, like uh, if you want to invest get a shaper and combine uh, the base with hunter boots and uh, get also tailwind because we crit and the animation speed up for everything for like uh um for whirling blades is gonna be feeling so good so that's it when it comes to the gear when it comes to the passive skill tree 
like I said, I'm still figuring out because I know for sure Harness the Void and Swift Killer are the right uh, things to go for. And you could possibly go for like some channeling skill in order to like charge it up on bosses to get frenzy charges for bosses. And other than that, Patient Reaper is great for sustain. With the Arcane is also good for sustain of the mana and these are like some defensive and speed and recovery uh, nodes as well that are very good. Um, in terms of the skill tree, initially we go through here, we pass through the physical and chaos damage, but now we go through here, we just cut uh, to more important skill points. You can get some physical damage, you can uh, you just get basically physical damage, life, you get the ring of blades as early as you can. Um, then you want to make sure that you're picking up crit, cast speed is very useful as well. The important uh, keystone that we're running is Eldritch Battery, so you'll notice that my energy shield is actually my mana. That means I can reserve Hatred, Wrath and also Clarity. I'm reserving Clarity so that I can get the extra benefit from uh, damage taken gained as mana while affected by Clarity on my Watcher's Eye. Um, and uh, then basically it's very standard, just picking up crit, spell damage, all the nice jewel, 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 all the two socket jewels that we can pick up everywhere. Um, and then we're just going to Holy Dominion because it's an amazing node for us since we deal physical damage and elemental damage and it gives us the resistances. So that is really good. This is also spell damage, crit, and these are very, very juicy uh, life nodes. So this is a very straightforward cluster that we always want to get. You will not get this part of it early on because early on, before you convert all of your damage to elemental, this doesn't do that much for you, but later it is amazing. Uh, other good notes, oh, we're also passing to here. Uh, Force Shaper is a very, very big uh, DPS increase. Once I get a couple of points here, then uh, I guess in three levels, then that puts me easily over 2 million DPS. Uh, as far as the path of building says, you could also get extra frenzy charge. You could get extra frenzy charge here. Uh, you could potentially get extra power charge. Uh, if you're going shield, you can get block nodes. Um, there are so many ways. Like I definitely think crit is the way to go, but without crit, you could do elemental overload. It's definitely pretty huge amount of damage. Um, if you don't want to invest in crit and you're playing like a Let's say you want to make a tanky version of this build, right? You would definitely uh, go for Mind Over Matter, which I want to go, but I'm tr having trouble still sustaining my mana if MOM is on. Uh, so you want to go like Mind Over Matter, still with EBE, so that it still like takes the this and before your life. You can pick up some more life, uh, especially like on the jewels. And you can uh, additionally pick up the block and then instead of the crit, right, you, you get all these nodes and pick elemental overload, which you're not far from one, two, three points to, to pick up early overload. Uh, so that's it when it comes to the passive skill tree. The build feels really, really good. Uh, it's like one of my favorite play styles. That's why I'm making this build and I'm going to pretty much try to min-max it for the rest of the league and try to get it to the point where it can actually kill bosses. Uh, but that of course requires kind of crazy amounts of damage, but I think that is definitely achievable with this build. If um, if the node of like the Harness the Void turns out to not be so good, I could potentially also respect to Assassin. Assassin could be another viable option of doing this, but the Harness the Void benefits so much from the conversion that I think it's probably gonna be uh, still a trickster build. If you have any questions, about this build uh, you can let me know in the comments below thank you guys for watching and see you next time